What's up everyone, it's your boy Shaf, aka That Mill Guy, here with some more Paper Modern gameplay. Today, we're going to be bringing a new challenger onto the channel to play some Esper Control while I play some Green Tron. And Rico, one of the master of mana bases, good friend of the channel, good friend, of course, um, outside of it as well. Avid EDH player, and again, master of mana bases, and a master of four-color Glintai Mill, which is you're going to get some gameplay of on the next Paper Modern gameplay. Look out for that. Now, today... Enrico's going to be playing some Esper Control and a bit of a brew in their own version of it. Mostly just due to like what they have access to and as well some of the changes they wanted to make knowing that they're going to play against Tron. So that should be pretty cool there and Decklist is going to be down below. My green Tron list is going to be rather stock but it's going to have that extra causal like in the main board for the mill matchup which is actually still pretty relevant thanks to its cast trigger in the control matchup now let's get right into it and rico's gonna win the die roll so let's go through their hands first now this is the first hand that enrico sees right here and it's not keepable because one land pretty self-explanatory the second hand that enrico sees not going to be keepable either just because there's not enough blue sources in here the prismatic could help against a map that i might play but that's not what we're here for the third hand is going to be a keep bottoming memory deluge and the kaya's guile because while well, we have lands and ways to cast counter spells. So, pretty good. The hands that I'm going to keep, let's go into the first one that I see. I'm not going to keep this one. There's no Tron lands in this one at all. So, it's not going to be something that is worth my time. Now, the second hand, which is right here. Now, some of you might argue that I would actually, or I should, put this away. But, I'm on the draw. I see two Tron lands. I have a chromatic. There's probably a chance I can draw into another one or a way to find another one. So let's see how the games go. Enrico, start us off. We're going to start things off simple. Enrico plays Polluted Delta and passes the turn. I'm going to play an Urza's Mind, tap it, play a Chromatic Sphere. At end step, Enrico's going to crack the Polluted Delta and grab a Watery Grave tapped. On their turn, Enrico's going to shock in a Hollowed Fountain, play a Tide Shaper kicked, turning my Urza's Mind into an island. Back to myself, I'm going to tap the island and crack the Chromatic Sphere, creating green. Once I draw a card, I'm going to play my Urza's Tower and then use the floating green and the tower to cast Sylvan Scry. I'm going to tutor up another Urza's Mine because I need to get Tron on ASAP. Once I do that, I'm going to pass the turn. And Rico's going to start off with combat. Swing at me for two. Doesn't make a land drop, which I'm pretty happy about, but passes the turn with two blue up. On my turn, I'm going to play a Forest and then use that to cast an Ancient Stern. With it, I'm gonna find the last Tron piece I need, so I'm kinda two turns behind, but I can make Tron eventually. Enrico's gonna play a Godless Shrine tapped, and then swing in for two. After passing the turn, I'm gonna go to untap and play my Urza's Mine. That's gonna then allow me to, well, tap out and play my Karn, because I gotta get things going here. And I'm gonna choose to uptick, because, well, I can't cast anything, I can tutor right now. Enrico shocks in another Watery Grave, getting me a little scared because now that's Archmage's Tron mana, and just swings in for combat, getting that Karn down as low as possible. I untap, I play my last Tron land, achieving it, but have to understand that Enrico has Counterspell mana up, so what am I really going to play here? I decide to down take Karn, I decide to get a Liquid Metal Coating. Let's keep things a little classical. It's cheap, and then I might be able to play something else after as well, and they might actually let it resolve, considering I have Tron up. So I'm going to decide to cast it, and then I can start threatening their blue sources a little bit and try and dodge Archmage's Charm, maybe? Well, Enrico doesn't take the bait on the coating, so I'm just going to have to play on my Worm Coil Engine, floating one. They decide to cast Counterspell on it, and it's their turn. Enrico's going to just clean up the board here, go in for combat, and kill the Karn. Passing the turn, I see that there's another counter spell up, so I just gotta really figure out how I wanna sequence things here. I decide to tap four for another Karn. Rico's a little pissed off at this at this point. And Rico casts Snapcaster Mage, targeting counter spell, casts the counter spell, stops my Karn. I'm then gonna pay three and cast an O Stone. I gotta get rid of these creatures. And Rico's gotta create pressure. Goes right into combat, hits me for four. Passes the turn, and I untap. I'm going to crack the O-Stone right away. I don't think I'm going to need the liquid metal coating, so let's not make things complicated. After that, I'm going to try and resolve a Ballista on two, which it does, and then use my final bit of mana to cast a Chromatic Start. I'm going to pass the turn, and thinking a little bit, Enrico decides to cast a Kaya's Guile, which is then going to force me to sack my Ballista. I'm going to ping Enrico for two off of it, and Enrico's going to create a 1-1, one -one, again realizing that they need to keep the pressure going. As always, right into combat, I get hit with a 1-1 one -one Spirit. Well, I untap and hit the top tick of the century. I find the Kozilek. And not only am I completely fine with this getting countered, on the cast trigger, I'm going to draw four cards. 
And Rico lets the cast trigger resolves, then decides to counter the Titan. And of course, I got nothing else to do, so I pass the turn. On their main phase, Enrico decides to kick a Tide Shaper, turning my Urza's Tower into an island. Passes the turn. On my turn, I'm going to tap a Forest and my island for a Sylvan Scrying, hoping to find another tower. Scrying resolves, I play and, well, find and play my tower, achieving Tron yet again. I use the green to cast Ancient Stirrings. I find a card in the Great Creator. My luck. The Great Creator isn't what I need right now. I'm going to slam Big Daddy Karn Liberated and uptick on it, getting some cards out of Enrico's hand. Gotta get those answers. With my last floating mana, I'm going to cast an Expedition Map past the turn, and Rico casts a Snapcaster Mage at end step to try and create another threat to threaten my life or the Karn. And Rico goes right to combat, swings five right at Karn. Gotta keep that bad boy low. I'm gonna start things off by paying to crack the map, grab another tower. I just want as much lands as possible, and I wanna thin out my deck. I wanna make sure I'm drawing as many threats as possible in future turns. I'm gonna uptick on Karn, and Enrico exiles an Archmage's turn, which is good. That's one less answer that they have. I decide to get greedy with things. I'm gonna cast another Karn Liberated, hoping to get it to resolve, but Enrico's got the counter spell, so that's not gonna stick. With the mana that I have left, I'm gonna cast that Karn the Great Creator that I had from the Ancient Stirrings and, well, decide to uptick it and then use the green that I have left to cast another Ancient Stirrings. The Ancient Stirrings is gonna find me a power plant and I'm just getting all types of insurance for any future Tide Shapers. Enrico goes to this turn and really goes into the think tank with this one. They decide that ultimately it's not going to be favorable at all to swing at the Karns and decides to go for my life total. Swings at me for- Alright, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, I'm not going to show this because it gets really cringe here. I literally throw this game away. I start drawing cards for some reason even though I tutored in Snaring Bridge. I don't down tick with my Karn to start the turn. I really don't know what I'm doing. Enrico ends up winning the game. I absolutely threw this. Let's just go right into the sideboards. All right, in sideboards, we're going to start things off with myself. I'm going to be on the play, obviously, here. So I keep things simple. I just want two Veil of Summers, and I'm going to take out a uh, Chromatic Star and a, well, O-Stone. I figure at least both of these I can tutor for. One is a value piece that I can just keep drawing through, which is actually going to come up, and an O-Stone. So... We're going to keep those out, and the Veil of Summers are going to help me resolve my spells. Now, in terms of what Enrico does, Enrico decides to, well, this is their sideboard, take out two Kaya's Guile, three Fatal Pushes, one John and Lock. They're going to then bring in a Path to Exile for things like Worm Coil Engine, Solitude as well, two Thought Seizes to help deal with things early, especially because they're turned behind, and the two Dovin's Veto. Let's go right into the hands themselves. All right, my first hand is already on the screen, and it's definitely not a keep. I don't have two Tron lands, and I think that has to be the bare minimum, in my opinion. You gotta have two Tron lands, so that's gonna go. My second hand, it works. It's got the map, it's got the two Tron lands, so I can confirm it. The problem is, obviously, if Tide Shapers are there, at least I have the map to then refine the Tron land that gets Tide Shapered, and then I have the Ancient Stirrings to help dig me further. I think this hand can function. In terms of what Enrico has, you're going to see that on the screen right now. They see a hand that they can keep, especially because it's got a Field of Ruin and a Thought Seize on one. So they're going to have that interaction, they're going to have the pieces they need, which kind of scares me. But let's head right into the games, and I'll start us off. All right, nice and simple. Mine, map, pass the turn. Enrico goes swamp into Thoughtseize. Wants to see what I have in store. Enrico decides to take the Ancient Stirrings, seeing that, well, I can't exactly cast the Ugin on curve, and they don't want me to find more threats. Makes sense. On my turn, I'm just going to play the Power Plant and pass. I got to crack this map. Enrico's going to play Field of Rune and pass. Now, I'm feeling really damn good about that. That is not blue mana at all, and that's not Tide Shaper coming down. End step. I'm just going to crack the map, find my tower. On my turn, I'm going to untap, play the tower, pay four, and play the card in the Great Creator that I top decked. I'm then going to down tick, find Liquid Metal Coating, and cast it with my tower. I pass the turn, and on Enrico's upkeep, I decide to turn the swamp into an artifact, tapping Enrico out of any colored mana they have right now. Enrico, after thinking for a bit and being hella frustrated by that top deck, realizes that is the one card that I needed to get this game under my control, decides to concede the game and go to a game three. All right, Tron doing Tron things. My bad, Enrico. I got the top decks and we got there, but hey, you're on the play on game three, so let's see what you can do. Enrico's going to see this hand right here and seems pretty logical as a keep. Got Teferi on the play here and Prismatic for any map that I might play or any turn one artifact that I might play, so pretty good there. The hand that I'm going to keep is, well, not this one. This hand right here, it's got the two Tron lands, but the London Mulligan really makes it so I can find better 
hands. I can't even cast the Sylvan, uh, sorry, the Ancient Stirrings here, and I have to rely on a top deck Tronline. So we're going to look at this hand that, well, again, no two Tron lands. So we're going to roll the dice again. Hopefully the London Mulligan can work for us. And finally, the fifth hand is a keep, baby. We got Natural Tron. And... Okay, I decided to bottom a worm coil engine and a sylvan scrying and have the map for any tide shaper insurance. I'm feeling really, really good about this. Let's get right into game three. Enrico, start us off. Enrico's gonna start things off with a flooded strand and pass. I decide to play Urza's power plant into an expedition map, passing the turn. And end step, Enrico decides to crack the flooded strand and get a Rogrin trial. Enrico starts things off with the marsh flats, pays one kills my map with a prismatic ending. On my turn, I'm just gonna play a mine and pass the turn, and Rico's gonna take that opportunity to crack the marsh flats and grab a watery grave tapped. On their turn, and Rico's gonna play a field of ruin and of course crack it immediately. They're gonna target the power plant. I'm gonna tutor for a swamp and Rico's gonna tutor for an island. I actually managed to find another power plant. I'll have some natural draws. Things are looking pretty good, so I'm gonna play that, pass the turn. And Rico decides to just play a basic planes and pass the turn. Pretty good. So I know they have an answer. But on my turn, I'm going to untap, play my tower, and achieve Tron. I'm going to use that to play a card the Great Creator, which resolves. I'm going to down tick and decide to actually grab that Chromatic Star that I put away. Because I'll tell you what, the cards in my hand aren't looking that great. So I need to draw through. I need to keep going. And I decide to cast it with my Forest. I'm going to crack the star, creating green and drawing a card. And then I'm going to use the remaining two mana that I have floating to cast a Ballista on one. Thankfully, that resolves. But Enrico then, at end step, casts a Gifts Ungiven, targeting me. Enrico shows me a Tide Shaper, a Snapcaster Mage, a Vindicate, and a Counterspell. Now, I have some choices here. Personally, I'm just going to give them the Tide Shaper and the Counterspell. The Tide Shaper forces them to tap out, and the Counterspell forces them to have an answer. Unfortunately, I already have permanence on the battlefield, so giving them the Vindicate and the Snapcaster Mage doesn't actually help my board. It takes away pieces from my board. So the Tide Shaper just deals with the land, which I don't necessarily need right now, and the Counterspell deals with a threat, which doesn't really matter to me because I don't have any. I already have them on board. Now, Enrico's going to play a basic island, then tap Black Black to cast Dam Targeting my Walking Ballista. The Ballista's just going to get sacked and shoot Enrico for two. Or one, I should say. But bear with me here. I know I said one of those lands was actually an island. I know it's not. It's fine. On my turn, I'm going to untap. I'm going to play Ghost Quarters and target the Rogan Trium. I figure now Prismatic Ending is going to be a pretty good out to some of my lower CMC stuff. So I just want to get that option out of the way. Try and get as many basics uh, as possible. Unfortunately, Enrico does have one and grabs an island. After that, I'm going to tap out my Tron lands, float one, and cast a Worm Coil Engine. Engine resolves. I'm just going to uptick Karn because I don't want to kill it at this point. It's one of my more powerful pieces. I'm just going to pass the turn. Enrico's going to untap and then pay three mana, three of their basics, to cast Teferi Time Raveler. They're going to downtick, return my Worm Coil Engine artifact to my hand, and draw a card. Enrico's going to pass the turn from there, holding up three mana, and I'm going to go to untap. On my turn, I'm going to cast an Urza's Tower, and seeing the Teferi on the battlefield, I'm going to preemptively cast a Veil of Summer. Now, I'm, obviously, I'm not going to get the draw card. But my spells are going to resolve or I'm going to bait out the counter spell. Either way, the veil does its trick. Now, fortunately enough here, the veil actually resolves. With that, my master plan can unfold. I down take Karn, tutor for a Sundering Titan, which I then happily decide to cast. In response, Enrico decides to pay three mana, cast an Archmage's Charm to draw two more cards, seeing that they, they're going to need some creative ways to deal with this Titan. Titan resolves, thanks to the Veil, and I decide to destroy the three lands that Enrico just tapped out, so one being for the island, one for the swamp, one for the plains. Enrico untaps, plays a Celestial Colonnade tapped. Upticks on Teferi. Enrico then pays two to create a Tide Shaper kicked, then turning one of my power plants into an island. So, I'm fresh out of Tron for now. I start things off with an uptick on Karn targeting the Titan. Now, the Titan's a 7-8, so if I target it with Karn, it actually becomes an 8-8 thanks to its CMC. So, we're getting in one more bit of damage if it goes through. I swing the Titan at Enrico, decides that that's perfectly fine, and I'm happy with that because I need that pressure going. Enrico takes 8. Second main, I see Enrico is answers down, so I'm going to play the Wormcoil engine again. Enrico starts things off by shocking in a Godless Shrine. Decides to pass the turn, 
They don't want to cast anything and can't exactly swing into my board. I started things off by going into combat. I'm only expecting a Snapcaster Mage to block, but Enrico comes in with the Wombo here with the Solitude Hardcast, exiling my World Coil Engine so it doesn't get his death trigger, trading with the Titan so Enrico can gain a little bit more life and, well... Titan's not going to die from that, not going to leave the battlefield, and Rico's not losing any land. This was a pretty damn good combat stuff for Enrico. On my turn, I just decide to uptick the Karn, play a forest, pass the turn. Enrico on their turn is going to keep the ball rolling, going to slam a Teferi 5, and really with one card in hand, I'm definitely shaking my head right now. This is not looking good. Now, seeing that I'm low on resources and really not doing anything, Enrico decides to downtick the Teferi 5 and put my... Sundering Titan third from the top knowing that of course it has the leaves the battlefield trigger but sees that they have the advantage they got two planeswalkers and a 2-2 attacker to get my card under control I decide to destroy three of their lands leaving the colonnade and a basic behind after that Enrico upticks the Teferi and swings at Karn for two on my turn I'm gonna untap and actually find a Sylvan Scrying which I'm gonna cast of course I actually don't think the Sundering Titan is going to be how I win this game, second from the top at this point, especially with two active Teferis and lands not mattering with a 2-2 out. So I'm going to then find a draw land. I'm going to crack that draw land. Finding nothing, I pass the turn. I still think it's the right choice to do because my top decks are so insane. If I can find a Kozilek, an Ulamog, even a Karn, whatever it is, I can hopefully get this game under control. And Rico's going to drive this advantage all the way home. 5 mana Teferi is going to uptick to draw a card, 3 mana Teferi is going to uptick just for more loyalty, and then after shocking in a Hollowed Fountain is going to swing at Karn, killing it with the 2-2. On my turn, I'm just going to play a tower and pass the turn. I am not too happy about this situation, but hey, Enrico's got to play the game as well. So on their turn, they're going to uptick both of their Teferis again. After that, Enrico swings at me for 2. Then an end step has the luxury of going to discard. Oh well, they got 7 cards, I'm going to go to my turn. On that note, I'm actually going to find my Tron piece again. I'm going to find a power plant, and then I'm going to cast the Relic of Progenitus I have in my hand. I'm going to play it immediately, exile all cards from all graveyard, especially with that memory deluge in there, and find a redraw. And then I'm going to pay six, cast a Worm Coil Engine, take it from there. On my end step, Enrico's just going to cast a Snapcaster Mage for value with no targets, but oh well, it's another threat. On Enrico's turn, Teferis are going to uptick. Unfortunately for me, then decides to cast another Tide Shaper, taking out my second power plant, turning it into an island. This is so frustrating, but hey, Enrico gets to do the good stuff. On end step, Teferi's ability is finally going to kick in and untap Enrico's two lands. They're going to pass. All right, peeps, I got a plan. I'm going to play my tower as the 10th mana source and cast my top deck Ulamog. That's right. Even if it gets countered, I don't care. I'm going to be able to exile both Teferis and the value engines out of there. Now, Ulamog is obviously going to get countered, but this is definitely, definitely looking pretty good. After that, I'm going to go to combat with the Worm Coil, and I'm going to gain six life, and Rico's going to block with the 2-1. Enrico on their turn decides to shock in a Watery Grave and swing for four. Now on my turn, I see blood in the waters. I'm going right into combat. Worm Coil is going to swing in. Enrico is going to cast Snapcaster Mage, targeting the Counterspell in the graveyard, and then just chump blocks the Worm Coil again. That's fine. I gain my six life, but I kind of sequence that wrong because now with that Counterspell help, I can't cast the other card in my hand. So I pass the turn, being a little bit upset about my sequencing. Enrico's going to play a Watery Grave tapped and just decides to keep up chump blockers. Passes the turn. On my turn, I still see blood in the waters. I'm going to swing in with the Worm Coil Engine. Enrico's going to cast Snapcaster Mage, targeting the counter spell, and then decides to triple block, killing the Worm Coil, allowing me to create a 3 3 Death Shudge token and a 3 3 Lifelink token. With that in mind, the Tie Shapers are dead, so I have full Tron again. I have crazy amounts of mana. Two of that mana, I'm going to cast and crack Chromatosphere, creating green. With four more mana, I'm going to cast Karn the Great Creator. Rico decides to, of course, counter the Karn the Great Creator, but tell you what, I got another one. <laughs> That's right, using the green and one of my towers, I'm going to cast the other one, and I'm going to downtick. I'm going to grab Sorcerer's Spyglass, and Rico's got a pretty full hand, so I'm, I want to see if I can get and stop a Field of Ruin or potentially another Planeswalker. Fortunately enough, Enrico reveals a handful of counter magic and a Teferi. Now, the Teferi is definitely what I'm going to be naming with the Spyglass. Enrico's going to keep things simple. Play a Polluted Delta, 
pass the turn. On my turn, I see lethal, so I swing sideways with my tokens. Now, of course, Enrico's got the Archmage's Charm, so Enrico's gonna grab the token specifically with lifelink and then trade out with the token with death touch, gaining them three life, killing both of my tokens. Pretty smart. On my turn, I just down tick Karn. It's gotta go and I need to find threat. So I'm gonna go into my exile zone, find a worm coal engine and cast it by tapping two towers. Enrico decides to crack in response to grab a godless shrine. Unfortunately, they don't actually have a blue source like they were thinking. So the engine resolves and I get to resolve in Ugin. I then decide to ping Enrico in the face for three with Ugin and pass the turn. After that, Enrico concedes we're missing on the fact that they hit the largest pocket of lands that they could ever find, not being able to find a single interactive piece. So Tron takes the day.